thank you first of all uh, i must thank uh, banshi for giving me this opportunity for honoring me here uh, and i do admire his uh, ability to do so many things at the same time uh, including so many no, new initiatives thanks arvin for giving me that generous introduction and uh, thank you amit for uh, chairing this uh, session uh, i will be speaking on one of my favorite topics and that is uh, the adipose tissue as far as indians are concerned um and in this uh, i will take a little different uh, take uh, whether we can increase adipose tissue and have benefit decrease adipose tissue and have benefit so i'll show you how we can do that and we we will take recourse to uh some of the indian data or some of the data which have context as far as indian population is concerned uh i have no conflict of interest this is my research team who has been working with me for last uh, 25 years a little bit uh, background about types of adipocytes and adipose tissue compartment these have a, a wide ranging implication for subsequent discussion uh on the left side you see white adipocyte it has a large lipid droplet um the adipocytes are white adipocytes are present throughout the body this is the largest type of adipose tissue um any adipose tissue inside the body whether intrathoracic or or uh, uh just a moment I'll, yeah yeah okay uh, whether intra thoracic or intra abdominal is called visceral adipose tissue it is a misnomer to say visceral adipose tissue for abdominal uh, adipose tissue uh, there is a varied importance to various types of adipose tissue uh, for example uh, the adipose tissue around the heart uh, has a different importance and there are number of depots as far as abdominal adipose tissues are concerned broadly divided into subcutaneous adipose tissue and intra abdominal adipose tissue which is subsequently uh, divided into pararenal para perirenal mesenteric uh, and it is the intra abdominal adipose tissue you would have heard of in various investigations as far as metabolism is concerned and that is something which is often talked about uh, and not other adipose tissue while other adipose tissue are of uh, also of importance as i'll show you now this is the brown adipose tissue and as you can see as opposed to the white adipose tissue where there was a single droplet there are multiple droplets here and uh, side by side if you see here brown adipose tissue on the left side white adipose tissue on the right side this is uh, uh, the uh, on the right side is the image uh, ftg pet image now uh, brown adipose tissue is usually seen on the pet imaging and hence uh, it is not often investigated uh, on cold uh, exposure this becomes activated and this is how some of the animals actually hibernate below below the ground in winters where and they activate their brown adipose tissue which is in generous amount is activated to let them live through the sub zero temperatures while in human beings it is only present in the para spinal region and peri renal region now a little bit about the structure and functions of white and brown adipose tissues uh and if you see here there are actually not two three types of adipose tissue white beige and brown now white we all know about the functions we know about uh, it's uh, that it releases free fatty acids and absorbs also it has endocrine and inflammatory functions uh, uh has important hormones include adiponectin leptin an inflammation number of inflammation uh, inflammatory factors may be released from the white adipose tissue beige and brown adipose tissues are basically involved in thermogenesis now beige is somewhat intermediate and brown is more definitive i'll show you the hierarchical development of these adipose tissue uh, brown adipose tissue is actually very less investigated as compared to the white adipose tissue thermogenesis uh, thermogenesis is something which has been known for last 20 years but more uh 
uh, effects and functions are being known now. For example, its effect on satiety and that all that it also secretes a number of uh, other factors called as batokines. Now, this is a, a little bit better diagrammatic representation of uh, the uh, white adipose tissue and brown adipose tissue. Again, white adipose tissue, large fat droplet, energy storage and release are primary function. Brown adipose tissue, number of fat droplet, and here you see number of mitochondria which are involved in energy disseminate. Uh, disseminating process and inside the mitochondria are the UCP uncoupling protein these are terribly important as far as the thermogenesis are concerned so high mitochondrial density and high sympathetic nervous system innervation is there in the brown adipose tissue so that it can carry out uh, it can be influenced by and carry out its function now, this is the uh, hierarchical development and you will see why uh, this is important as far as uh, the development of drugs and all subsequent uh, uh, research is concerned. Um, <clears throat> on the top side is the one common precursor. And so you can see cellular plasticity, uh, how one cell can change into the another. And this uh, gives us great opportunity actually to modulate some cells to turn into another. Dermomyotomal precursor, one on one line goes on to develop skeletal muscle and on the other line, brown adipose tissue. A mesodermal stem cell, it can actually turn into a white adipose site, but on certain stimulants, for example, environmental cues, cold or PPI, are gamma agonist and catecholamines and this is an important pathway that's why I have put star here it goes on to develop a beach precursor and beach or bright cell which can convert into brown adipose tissue this pathway is particularly important uh, and I'll show you subsequently and from white adipose tissue also directly beige adipose tissue on, can be formed on certain stimulants, cold catecholamines, and this is what is called as browning of white adipose tissue. So if we have understood this, I think subsequent discussion becomes easier. A little bit about gender and age on adipocytes so that we can understand our bodies, both males and females. Now, as far as uh, women as concerned, pre-menopausal, their most of the adipose tissue is in the subcutaneous and gluteal region and less in the intra-abdominal. And this is the type of adipocyte that we see clean here, quite clean. Not much of inflammatory cells in between and smaller. The moment they have menopause, the more accumulation of intra-abdominal adipose tissue while subcutaneous adipose tissue accumulation also continues and this uh, means larger adipocyte with inflammatory component. I'll show you that a little later and these are so-called sick adipocytes. Uh, this gives us uh, a diagrammatic uh, uh, explanation how estrogens protect against obesity. Estrogens uh, through several factors like natural uretic peptides, they have ability to convert white adipose tissue to breach or bright fat cell which can subsequently be attempted to convert to brown adipose tissue. Also through leptin, there is increase in the sympathetic nervous uh, system and increase in the UCP uncoupling. Uh, so actually in presence of estrogen and with the, its effect on decrease in the food intake, obesity somewhat prevented pre, in the pre-menopausal state in women. The moment menopause occurs, food intake increases and 24 hours energy expenditure is decreased. And this effect on the white adipose tissue to convert to beige and uh, brown adipose tissue decreases, hence obesity and redistribution of fat. 
occurs. As far as aging is concerned, there are three main phenomena which occur. Decreased ability to store lipids, decreased adipogenesis, and increased inflammation. Now, for example, this pre-adipocyte, because the adipogenesis decreases, it should not form too much, but it actually accumulates in the ectopic sites in the form of mad cells. And there is increased outpouring of free fatty acids and which occurs both ways towards the, the ectopic site and towards the adipocytes also. Also, it subsequently further secretes the inflammatory cytokines. So there is increase in the adipocyte, increased macrophages and mast cells and with increased free fatty acid, there is lipotoxicity and insulin resistant adipocyte occurs. And here, the ectopic fat accumulation occurs, which is, uh, which is particularly important. And I'll show you subsequently. So what to decrease? Which adipose tissue to decrease? It is now has become clearer that we should decrease white adipose tissue. Now, once again, this is the white adipose tissue with core localization of macrophages, which have a crosstalk, leading to ample, amplified paracrine environment, which is more or better seen here. This increases NFK beta pro inflammatory ethogenic cascade. So, this happens, and with increased fatty acid and more lipolysis more accumulation of ectopic fat occurs and which is seen here. So with increased energy intake and decreased energy expenditure, positive energy balance, the lipid overflow occurs into the abdominal itself. So there is greater accumulation both in men and women of intra-abdominal adipose tissue, but in Indians, are uh, subcutaneous adipose tissue and we have done a number of studies as far as subcutaneous adipose tissue is concerned and our now answer is that it is not only the subcutaneous adipose tissue it is deeper layers what is called as deep adipose tissue in the posterior abdominal wall which is more metabolically active and important as far as Indian population is concerned. So both increase but subcutaneous adipose tissue is three times more than intraabdominal adipose tissue and has more ability to secrete free fatty acid. Liver fat is terribly important. I shall come to liver fat again and briefly discuss how a reduction of liver fat will help. And another, uh, uh, other um, the organs will be involved. For example, pericardial space, muscle, perirenal fat is becoming more important and pancreatic fat. But as wide adipose tissue expand, and this is the recent research, hypoxia occurs, which actually elevates oxygen sensor called H1F1 alpha. It is pro-fibrotic, so it causes fibrosis wherever adipose tissue is present. So where can it cause fibrosis? It can cause fibrosis in the liver and subsequently causing cirrhosis. It can cause fibrosis in the heart, in the kidney. So this is the type of thing that we see in Indian population. This is from my friend Nicola Abate from UT Southwestern. Mid subcutaneous adipose tissue size, uh, size in South Asian population versus white population, you can see how different, larger adipose tissue and accumulation of the inflammatory cells leading to sick adipocytes. This is a hypothetical diagram which has been presented by the uh, several workers, including Dr. Sonia Anand from, uh, from Canada and Navid Sattar from UK based on our studies and studies from other people. In non-morbid phenotype, 
excess energy is accumulated into superficial adipose tissue, which causes adipocyte hyperplasia. Some is actually activated in the deep tissue also, but not much. And nothing much in the visceral depot and nothing much in the liver. So there's hardly any change in the cardio metabolic factors. While in Indian phenotype, and you can see how thick is the subcutaneous fat here in our, one of the uh, diagram, uh, one of the MRI taken from a, one of the above published studies. There is excess energy which is deposited into superficial and particularly deep adipose tissue, which causes adipocyte hypertrophy versus adipocyte hyperplasia here and decreases adiponectin hypoxia occurs as I have told you, F1, uh, F1 uh, uh, sensor is upregulated and increase ad, uh, accumulation in the visceral adipose tissue with a markedly high free fatty acid flux, which accumulates in the liver, causing multiple glucometabolic changes, leading to diabetes or exacerbating diabetes and hypertension and the coronary artery disease. This is the overall wisdom from several studies. So where white adipose tissue decrease matters? I feel at number of places in the abdominal and heart and kidney, but one place is liver, which is close to actually our heart because we have done a number of studies now. Now liver actually works both ways. Any accumulation of fat in the liver leads to diabetes, and once diabetic, if we decrease liver fat, it may reverse that. So look at this. This is the usual liver span as far as Indian population is concerned. And this is the uh, grade 3 fatty liver with possible fibrosis occurring for the liver span of 22.8. Now we have earlier shown that liver span cutoff, lending diabetes risk is 15.6 and this can be very easily determined by an ultrasound scan. And similarly, the pancreatic fat. Now look at the two pancreatic fat images on, from one of our studies. This is from MRI at lumbar vertebra 2 and 3. Both are non-obese people. One with diabetes on the left side and or on the right side without diabetes. And look at this. The volume of uh, the pancreatic uh, volume, which signifies fat, is higher in non-obese case type of versus, versus the, uh, versus the uh, non-diabetic subject. Now, why these are important? Because in, way back in 2011, a very seminal experiment by LIM et al., in 11 patients alone showed the way for reversal of diabetes. Look at the 11 obese patients with type 2 diabetes, 600 kilocalories per day diet, followed for one, four, and eight weeks. And look at this. Now, fasting blood blood glucose normalized within the first week on, and this is all liquid uh, and plenty of sugar in this particular diet, despite that. But I think... What these author meant to say in their article was that it was liver fat reduction from 12.8% to 2.9% within eight weeks, which is possibly responsible for reversal of diabetes. And so was the pancreatic hepatic, uh, pancreatic triglyceride content from 8% to... So look at this, how little is the decrease actually? And they say this much decrease is enough to reverse diabetes, while a more uh, decrease is necessary as far as liver is concerned. Now, can we can we do it with diet? Can we do it with uh, bariatric surgery? Uh, any major weight loss project? But can we do with the drug also? And look at this. This is our current data. In 30 patients with dapa glucosin and using uh, a proton density fraction for liver fat and pancreatic fat estimation. 
uh, we showed that from baseline to 120 days, the reduction of liver fat was from 15.2% to 10.1% using tapaglifosin. Remember, in LIMS' previous study, it was 10%. So we are falling short here. 5% here, 10%. So maybe more is required as far as liver fat reduction is concerned. And similarly, look at this. In our study, pancreatic fat reduction from 7.5 to 5.99%, uh, which is 1.5%, which is uh, falling short again as far as pancreatic fat reduction but in the previous experiment is concerned. So this led to Decrease in the C peptide level, decrease in the insulin level, post fasting. So, reversal of diabetes is possible not only with the diet or bariatric surgery, anything which leads to significant reduction of weight, hepatic fat, and pancreatic fat, and SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP 1 analogs are some of the drugs we can use to reverse diabetes as well. Now, as far as brown adipose tissue is concerned, now, uh, how, how it is activated? Uh, sympathetic now with the food, cold, beta-3 adrenergic receptors are activated. Some of the agonists also activate this. Triglyceride is secreted, which actually combined with UCP1. And look at this long-chain fatty acid with UCP1. This is uncoupled leading to non-shivering thermogenesis. This is uh, uh, when act the brown adipose tissue is activated, leading to increase in the energy production. And we now know that brown adipose tissue crosstalks with almost every organ and influences metabolic health, whether it's a heart or skeletal muscle or liver or immune cells. And uh, you can see number of intermediate factors are involved. So brown adipose tissue is usually found in hibernating animals. It has remarkable capacity to dissipate energy through brown as fat specific UCP1 and using FDG PET scanning new observations have been made. Usually detected in only 10% of the population. So you may be brown adipose tissue negative or positive. If it's a positive, your weight will be lesser than a person who's negative. A higher at young ages decreases with age and amount of brown adipose tissue inversely proportional to body mass index adiposity in intractable fat. Higher the bat, the lower your weight. And browning of VAT, which is very, very important, uh, may increase thermogenesis and protect against obesity. And also, while we know about the obesity-induced fibrosis through H1F1 alpha, uh, Cold-induced fibrosis inhibition may occur once brown adipose tissue is activated, leading to no fibrosis. And this is one way to reduce actually hepatic fibrosis. Now, <clears throat> brown adipose tissue is less in Indian population. This is a case control study uh, com comparing South Asians with white vocation published way back. So we may actually accumulate more fat because we have lesser amount of brown adipose tissue. And hence, resting energy expenditure is lesser as compared to white Caucasian who may be sitting and you may be sitting and you may be expending less energy. You may be accumulating more fat while white Caucasian may not be accumulating fat. Activation of brown adipose tissue is metabolically beneficial. So brown adipose tissue significantly contribute to whole body thermogenesis. So 200 to 400 kilocalorie per day under cold condition, which is a huge amount of calories and diet induced thermogenesis. Brown negative subjects in their 40s possess approximately 6 kg more body fat than bad positive subjects. Uh, hence, it is tempting to propose bad as the target for weight loss. So, how can bad beach fat be accumulated? Now, look at this. This guy is taking a trip to Siberia to lose fat. Now, uh, this particular uh, uh, experiment compared uh, one group of people who are exposed to fat, uh, to cold, and other who are uh, not exposed to cold. 
and the body fat was measured and look at that body fat decrease after cold exposure these are bad positive subjects and similar very interestingly you know similar thing was seen with capsaicin which is mirch mirchi uh, uh, extract from mircha and you can see body fat decreased after capsaicin exposure and this actually improves glucose uptake and insulin sensitivity and again we see the cold exposure lead to increased activation of bat here as shown here very well and the glucose uptake increase and free fatty acid concentration decreased there are other other uh, substances also for example caffeine or uh, extract from tea cathecin now this is a acute study we showed in bat positive patient the energy expenditure increased with exposure to cathecin and in five weeks of study the cold induced thermogenesis increased again you can see high bat people they are the ones who responded and there are more things also for example this lady is saying is is giving her husband an apple but she is taking all the peels the peels are more important they increase akt signaling and you can see very well that brown adipose tissue increase and ucp also increase on exposure to ursocolic acid and body fat decrease uh, bo body temperature increased so there are number of factors which actually activate brown and beige adipose tissue cold beta 3 adrenergic activation and the cannabinoid receptor activation estrogens nutritional tea cathecin and coffee capsaicin also lic acid reservoir trial and drugs they are disappointing actually melatonin sildenafil i'll show you a slide about pyridazone cetagliptin and fluvastatin do not much now this is a recent study a couple of days back we showed that in mice and in adipose tissue in human being uh, there is increase in the gene expression and of for browning of vat and you can see very well here you know pyridazone once added is actually increases genes for ucp1 this is mice and this is in human pyridazone increase ucp1 so this is uh, a last slide you can see here wide adipose tissue which increases free fatty acid lowers adiponectin levels increases adipokine inflammation hypoxia fibrosis and brown adipose tissue decrease of which decreases energy expenditure decreases uh, satiety and increases weight and somewhere in between is big adipose tissue and which induction should be actually attempted with number of factors that we know which may work so in indian population this is something we should be decrease especially from liver and from pancreas and this is something which should be increased by number of factors which we know uh, and should be more research uh, because in indian population more studies are needed so i summarize there are gender and age and ethnic differences in adipose tissue at uh and related biology there are specific physiological factors associated with white beige and brown adipose tissue which have implication for obesity and diabetes role of various drugs and dietary factors to increase bat and browning of white adipose tissue is increasingly being researched asian indians have expanded adipose tissue stores with sick adipocytes hypoxic adipocytes predisposing them to early dysmetabolic state wide adipose tissue should be lesser in indians and back more and more recruitment of beach adipose tissue is required these changes in adipose tissue compartments have potential implication for management or reversal for diabetes once again i thank uh, uh, banshi for uh, arvind amit and everybody for giving me this opportunity and congratulate them for success of this particular conference